Hello there, my name is Jay. I'm one of the expert TOEFL teachers here at E2 Language. In today's class, we're going to look at an interesting aspect of spoken speech called connected speech. This is going to help you to sound more fluent in your TOEFL speaking test, but it's also going to help you with your listening skills as well, because it's the aspect of speaking that makes listening difficult, all right? So do stick around and watch this one. Also, in the description below, there is a hyperlink where you can download E2 Language's TOEFL Ultimate Guide. All right, let's get started. So what is connected speech? Well, in order to understand what connected speech is, let's do a very simple little repeat the sentence activity. I'm going to say five sentences. You just need to repeat the sentence after I say it. Ready? Pick it up. True or false? I must go. Don't you? Get to it. All right, that was pretty straightforward, right? You probably repeated all of those little phrases or sentences accurately. Now, in each of those phrases or sentences was a little piece of connected speech magic. Let's take a closer look at them. So there is a big difference between written English and spoken English. When I write English, I write pick it up. But when I speak it, I don't say pick it up, I say pick it up. Or when I write true or false, I write true or false, but when I say true or false, I say true or false, true or false. When I write I must go, I write it just like that in C, but when I say it, I say I must go, I must go. I do not say I must go. When I write don't you, I write it like don't you, but I never say don't you, I say don't you, don't you. And for E, get to it, I never say that, I say get to it, get to it, get to it. So what's going on here? Let's take a close look at these rules. So there are five aspects of connected speech. A, there's linking, where I don't say pick it up, I say pick it up. Adding, where I add the w sound. Deleting, where I say I must go, not I must go. What's going on there? And changing, don't you, don't you, don't you, don't you. And also combining, get to it. Crazy, crazy stuff. This is the reason why listening to English is so difficult because you're probably used to reading English and seeing the words written in their proper form, if you like, but then all of a sudden when they're spoken, and especially if they're spoken at a normal pace, which does sound quite rapid, they're undergoing all these changes. So the spoken and the listening is far different than the reading and the writing. Crazy stuff. Let's take a closer look at each of these rules. So let's look at the linking rule first. And there is a rule here. The rule is this. If we have a word ending in a consonant, a consonant is a sound that you make, a phoneme, a, a sound of English like k, m, p, d, r, l, whatever. There are lots in English. These are sounds that you make where you're using an aspect of your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the roof of your mouth, your teeth to make a specific sound. This is contrasted with a vowel sound, a, e, o, a, where I'm not using a part of my mouth to make that sound, okay? So let's look at the rule here. So if a word ends in a consonant sound and the next word starts with a vowel, we've got a little rule here. Take a look at these two very common words. We have this, which ends in a consonant, and we have is, which starts with a vowel. So we never say this is, we say this is. This is a link. This is, this is. For example, we don't say this is a picture of my new grandson. We say this is a picture of my new grandson. Listen as I say this at a normal spoken rate. This is a picture of my new grandson. This is a picture of my new grandson. 
if you were to slow me down, I would actually say, this is a picture of my new grandson. Hmm, that is an example of a link or number of links in a single sentence. Okay, your turn. I want you to say these three simple sentences and say them rapidly and note the links that you make. Ready? Number one, my name is Dave. Say it properly. I live in India. Say it properly. When is it? Say it properly. By properly, I mean my name is Dave. My name is Dave. I live in India. I live in India. I live in India. When is it? When is it? When is it? When is it? These are all examples of links. Let's look at the next rule of connected speech. Magical stuff, hey? So sometimes we don't link. Sometimes what we do is add a sound that is definitely not in the spelling. Like true or false. Okay, so if we have a word ending in an oo, ow, or no sound, and the next word starts with a vowel, we add this little w sound. Now, I'm teaching you these rules explicitly, okay? I don't want you to stress. I don't want you to even try to remember them. All that's happening here is I'm telling you what actually happens when a native or near native speaker of English speaks at a normal rate of speech, okay? All of this stuff just magically starts to happen. You probably do this already because it sort of happens automatically. It's just the nature of the two sounds that come together will form this little what sound, for example. So don't stress, I don't want you to remember it. Just raise your awareness of it. It will also help your listening skills. Let's take a closer look at this one. So here we have a word ending in an oo sound and the next word starts with an I sound, a vowel. So we don't say blue eyes, we say blue wise, blue eyes, blue wise, what, what, what gets added. Your turn. Take a look at these three sentences, quickly say them, and notice how we're adding an additional what sound. Go. So if you said them at a normal spoken rate, you would say, she has blue eyes. How are you? How are you? How are you? Throw it to me. Throw it to me. She has blue eyes. How are you? Throw it to me. There are, in fact, other words or other rules we add an additional sound. There's one where we add a r sound, for example, that does not exist in the spelling or in the written text. However, we'll teach you that to you in another lesson. In fact, you might want to subscribe to this channel because in a few weeks we're going to launch a monster pronunciation video which is really going to help you. I think it's like an hour and a half. It's me and another expert teacher, Amber, and we go through all of these rules in depth. So if you don't want to miss that particular video lesson that's coming up soon, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Okay, let's go to the next rule. Okay, rule C is pretty easy. It's a deletion. So we delete a particular sound when particular sounds come together, okay? So if you have a t sound, or a d sound, or a h sound, we often just delete these. I don't say it must be. I say it must be, it must be, it must be. I don't say you and me. I say you and me, you and me, you and me. There's no sound there. There's no D sound there, no D sound. I don't say I saw him. I say I saw him, I saw him. In fact, that's kind of weird because it almost sounds like a R sound. I saw him, I saw him. Anyway, again, more weird stuff with connected speech. That rule is pretty straightforward. Okay, so the next rule, D, is where we change a sound altogether. This one is very 
strange. And again, it's really important to understand this one, especially in, well, not necessarily even informal situations, but just with very common phrases, they differ significantly from how they're written when they're spoken. Let's take a closer look at this rule. So if we have a word that ends in a t sound and the next word starts with a y sound, we add, we transform the sound into a ch sound. What the hell? Let's take a close, closer look here. What and you, so the word ends in a t sound. The next word starts with a y sound. I do not say what you, I say what you, what you, what you. For example, have you decided what you want? This is not how we speak at all. What we really say is, have you decided what you want? Have you decided what you want? What you, what you, what you want? Here's another one. If a word ends in a d sound and the next word starts with a y sound, we add this j sound. What? For example, did you, we never say did you. It sounds like a robot. What we say is, did you, did you, did you? For example, here's a guy saying, well, this guy sounds like a robot. Did you know there's a sale on? Nope, 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 nope. We say, did you? Did you know there's a sale on? Did you know there's a sale on? Okay, we've covered four of the rules so far and we're realizing that there's quite a little bit of, quite a little bit? There's quite a bit of magic in spoken English. Let's go to the final rule here. This is where we combine sounds together, okay? It's a bit similar to deleting, but we keep one of them. So let's take a closer look. So if a word ends in a consonant and the next word starts with the same consonant, for example, hot tea, we have the t and the t. We don't say hot tea. What we say is hot tea, hot tea. Hot, hot, hot tea. For example, this is wrong. We do not say, here's some hot tea, hot tea. We say, here's some hot tea. And we delete, or we combine rather, those two T sounds into a single T sound, T. Okay, take a look at this example. Here we have two similar sounds, very similar. Here we have a T and a D sound, they're almost identical. T, D, T, D. Now the same thing happens. We're going to have to combine them or get rid of one of the sounds and just keep that second D sound. So hot dog sounds unnatural. What we would usually say or what we always say in spoken speech is one hot dog. Do you want a hot dog? Hot dog, hot dog. There's no T sound there at all. So take a look at this paragraph here. Doctors are giving new advice for people with coughs. They are advising, I won't read it all, but you can tell by the way that I'm reading it that it is very unnatural. And if I were to say this paragraph, it would transform significantly with all of those connected speech rules that we looked at before. Let me read this out, and I'm going to purposely exaggerate all of these connected speech rules. It's kind of like I'm speaking, but imagine you're slowing me down, so you're hearing all of the rules of linking and deleting and transforming, changing, combining, etc. Okay, have a listen to this. Dr. Zar, Dr. Zar, Dr. Zar, Dr. Zar, there's a link giving new advice, wood advice for people with coughs. They are advising, they are advising, they are advising, advising people not to, not to, there's your hot dog, not to, visita, visita, visit a doctor, to get treat, get, tre got two t sounds, so we delete one, get treatment, get treatment, delete the first one in fact, Instead, if you have a, have a cough, what you need to do is drink or eat honey or get medicine from a pharmacy. 
Did you know that honey has antibacterial properties? Okay, let me read it through properly just so you can get a feel for how at a normal spoken rate this all sounds, okay? Let me go back to the way it's written. Pay attention to the way it's written and the way that I actually say it. Doctors are giving new advice for people with coughs. They're advising people not to visit a doctor to get treatment. Instead, if you have a cough, what you need to do is drink or eat honey or get medicine from a pharmacy. Did you know that honey has antibacterial properties? And again, when the speaking takes place, all of these magical rules of connected speech happen. So let's summarize these five connected speech rules. Let's take a look. A, pick it up is a linking rule, pick it up. True or false is an adding rule, true or false. I must go is a deleting rule. Don't you is like a magical transformation rule. And get to it is a combining rule. Again, this is the difference between written English and spoken English. Cool, if you enjoyed that, and if you thought, wow, that was incredible, I learned a lot about spoken speech, or I need to learn more about the test that I'm taking, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. But more importantly, check out e2language.com because that's where really all of the magic happens. YouTube's fine, we often release videos here, some of the videos are here, all of our good methods lessons and instructional videos are on the platform at e2language.com. My name is Jay, I will see you soon.